mathematical eulogy for my great teacher and mentor, Leon Ehrenpreis, one of the greatest mathematicians of our time. Leon was born on May 22, 1930, and passed away on August 16, 2010. It's really a little bit funny to give a eulogy about Leon in an experimental mathematics seminar. Leon was everything but an experimental mathematician. He was a lot of things, but one thing he was not was experimental or computational. He was the epitome of conceptual. He believed he was also a rabbi, an ordained rabbi, but he was also religious in a more profound way. He was mathematically religious. He believed that every mathematical statement could be done without any calculations. All you need is to think about it deeply enough. So he was conceptual. He was also one of the few, along with Israel Gelfand, who was still it's a dying breed, a universal. He knew so much mathematics, more than anybody today uh, could master. Uh, so he was really a remarkable person. He was not only a great mathematician, he was also a very, very interesting person. And I met him for the first time, I think it was 1975, when I was a graduate student in Israel. And my teacher, Yakar Kanai, told me about this great expert in partial differential equations who is also A, a marathon runner, and B, an ordained rabbi. So I expected him to be a dignified grand old man. And then I went to his talk, and his talk was very informal, and was a beautiful talk, and then he saw me with my motor scooter uh, going back and he asked for a ride. <laughs> so it was very funny that the rabbi, uh, he was not a real rabbi, my, uh, he didn't have a beard, but I went to, to the, a famous rabbi and a famous professor uh, just riding behind me. Uh, and then he talked about everything. So one thing he told me about his pedigree. He got his bachelor's when he was 20 years old, in a very amazing class in City College of New York. This is one of the most impressive graduating class in mathematics, I think, of all time. It included one Nobel Prize winner, uh, Robert Uman, and some uh, other dignitary, dignitary uh, some very, very good people. Uh, uh, here are some of them. So a uh, 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 woman the, who got the Nobel Prize in economics a few years ago, he was interviewed, and then he was told, telling about his class, and he said some very prominent mathematicians were there, and he listed them. A uh, Jack Swartz of Danforth, Danforth Swartz fame, and then Leon L. Price was listed second. A uh, Jack Alan Shields, Leo Flato, Martin Davis, who solved uh, Hilbert's test problems, in fact, and the famous problem solver, D.J. Newman. Speaking of D.J. Newman, Leon Elbright and D.J. Newman were also best friends, and Don Newman got Leon Elbright interested in mathematics. When Leon was in high school, he was more interested in handball, and uh, it was Donald who got him interested in mathematics. And once again, they, they complemented each other. Donald and Newman was the epitome of the problem solver. He had no patience for theory and for uh, fancy stuff. And Leon could not solve any problems, yet they were best friends and they always got interacted. So you can complement each other and get along, even if you have different approaches. So I met 
Dion, for the first time, a long time ago, 35 years ago, and for the last time, I met him in the Gelfand Memorial, Memorial, where he gave a very nice five-minute tribute about Gelfand and how some stories about keys. He was organizing a conference, and uh, Gelfand was trying out the keys, and he had some metaphor uh, explaining Gelfand's approach to mathematics through a hands-on approach uh, by trying out keys. I think it has some deeper meaning. That's what I remember. Him. Unfortunately, I could not uh, come to his last talk. Uh, I was out of town, and then uh, at Rutgers, and then it was he sadly uh, had uh, an incident, so he didn't make it to the end of the talk, and I only was told about it. About a year and a half ago, or almost two years ago, Leon sent me an email. Dear Doron, here is a copy of my Sefer. Sefer means a book in Hebrew on the Pentateuch. I hope you will read it and make some interesting comments. And this is one of the greatest regrets of my life. I'm very a uh, responsible person, and whenever I get an email, unlike some people who just don't respond, I respond right away because I know maybe I never get around to responding it. So I wrote him back. Thank you, Leon. We'll look at it soon. D. And to my greatest uh, embarrassment, I never had a chance. I forgot all about it because it was in Microsoft Word and it would have taken me uh, maybe two minutes to figure out how to print it out. So, and then I was going to go. But after he passed away, I went back to it. And I saw a beautiful commentary on the first five books of, of the Bible. So here is the first chapter, Bereshit, Genesis. And it's really full of insightful, uh, combining insightful remarks and commentary, combining mathematics, science, and Bible. From Leon, there was no contradiction between science and religion. He was sure that everything can be reconciled. And this is a very brave, I'm not sure how accurate it is, but a very brave attempt to reconcile. In Leon's view, the world was created 5,571 years ago. But in the old days, the years were stretched out much longer. So if you look at the integral, there's no contradiction. Okay, I'm not sure about the details. But the first thing he tries to do is about the first word of the Bible. The Bible starts with the Hebrew word Bereshit, which is usually, for example, in the King James translation, translated in the beginning. And Leon takes issue with this translation. Be means in. But reshit could mean literally beginning, but it can also mean the foundations. And he did not believe that the world was created 5,571.